Hello guys, Anelamook here, and today, um, I'm going to be reading you guys The Tale of Emily Winsnap by Liz Kessler. Um, before I start, quick announcement, I will be doing a little, um, I'll be doing a little show, TV show. Technically, it's not a TV show because it has no acting, but... The TV show will be, um, me reading books that I have written myself. So all the rights owned are to me. That means I've written the books, edited them, and published them on, um, online sites such as Quotive and Wattpad. So I hope you guys will be looking forward to that. I am personally looking forward to that so much because my talent lays with writing and reading and of course goofballness because I don't it's not even a word I don't know but yes I am I scored a level four on my state testing for um writing which a level four in my school would be basically an equivalent of an a plus for language arts so basically top of my class I hope you guys enjoy my reading of on a bridge reading of The Tale of Emily Winstap by Liz Kessler. And I'll be singing um, the poem in the front just because I'm weird. Come, dear children, let us away, down and away below. Now my brothers call from the bay. Now the great winds words shorewards blow. Now the salt tides seaward flow. Now the wild white horses play. Champ and chafe and toss in the spray. Come, dear children, let us away. This way, this way. From the Forsaken Merman by Matthew Arnold. <clears throat> Chapter 1. Can you keep a secret? Everybody has a secret, of course. But mine's different, and it's kind of weird. Sometimes I even have nightmares that people will find out about it and lock me up in a zoo or a scientist laboratory. It all started in 7th grade, swim class, on the first Wednesday afternoon at my new school. I was really looking forward to it. Mom hates swimming, and she always used to change the subject when I asked her why I couldn't learn. But we live on a boat, I'd say. We actually do. We're surrounded by water. You're not getting me in that water, she'd reply. Just look at all the pollution. You know what it's like when the dust day cruises have been through here. Now stop arguing and come and help me with the vegetables. She had kept me out of swimming lessons all the way through grade school, saying it was unhealthy. All those bodies mixing the same water, she'd sh shudder. That's not for us. Thank you very much. And each time I asked her, that would be that. End of discussion. But the summer before I started middle school, I finally wore her down. All right, all right, she sighed. I give in. Just don't tr start trying to give me, get me in there with you. I'd never been in the ocean. I'd never even had a bath. Hey, I'm not dirty or anything. I do take a shower every night. But there isn't enough room for a bathtub on the boat. So never in my life had I been totally immersed in water. Until the first Wednesday afternoon of seventh grade. Mom bought me a special new bag to carry in my new bathing zoo and towel. On the side, it had a picture of a woman doing the crawl. I looked at the picture and dreamed about winning Olympic races with a striped racing suit and blue goggles just like hers. Only, it didn't happen quite like that. When we got to the pool, a man with a whistle and white shorts and a red t-shirt told the girls to go change in one room and the boys in the other. I changed quickly in the corner. I didn't want anyone to see my skinny body. My legs are like sticks, and they're usually covered in scabs and bruises from getting on and off of the king of the sea. That's our boat. I admit, it's kind of a fancy name for a little houseboat with moldy ropes, peeling paint, and beds the width of a ruler. Anyway, we usually just call it king. Julia Cross smiled at me as she put her clothes in her locker. I like your suit, she said. It's just plain with bl black with a white strip across the middle. I like your cap, I said, and smiled back as she squeezed her hair into her tight pink swimming cap. I squeezed my ponytail on mine. I usually wear my hair loose. Mom made me put it in a scrunchie today. My hair is mousy brown and used to be short, but I'm growing it out right now. It's a bit longer than shoulder length so far. 
Julia and I sit next to each other sometimes. We're not best friends. Sharon and Madison used to be my best friend, but she went to St. Mary's. I'm up right poor at junior high. Julia's the only person here that I might want to be friends with, but I think that she really wants to be friends with Mandy Rus Rustin. They hang out together between classes. I don't mind, not really, except when I can't find my way to the cafeteria or to some of the classes. At those moments, it might be nice to have someone to get lost with. Brightport Junior High is about ten times bigger than my elementary school. It's like an enormous maze with billion, with millions of boys and girls who all seem to know where, what they're doing. You're co you coming, Julia? Mandy rushed in, stood between us with her back to me. She gave me a quick look over her shoulder, then whispered something to Julia's ear and laughed. Julia didn't look up as they passed me. Mandy lives on the pier, like me, only not on a boat. Her parents run the video arcade, and they've got an apartment above it. We used to be pretty good friends until last year. That's when I accidentally told my mom, who told Mandy's mom, that Mandy had shown me how to win free games on the pin wizard machine. I didn't mean to tell, get her in trouble, but, well, let's just say I'm not exactly welcome in the arcade anymore. In fact, she hasn't spoken to me since. And now we've ended up in the same swim class at Brightport Junior High. Fabulous. As if starting a new school the size of a city isn't bad enough. I finished getting ready and hurried off. Okay, listen up, 7C, the man with the whistle said. He told us to call him Bob. Any of you kids totally confident to swim on your own? Of course we can. We're not babies, Manny sneered under her breath. Bob turned to her face, to face her. Okay, then. Do you want to start us off? Let's see what you can do. Manny stepped towards the pool. She stuck her thumb in her mouth. Ooh, look at me. I'm a baby. I can't swim. Then she dropped herself sideways into the water, her thumb still in her mouth. She pretended to be to keep slipping under as she did this really over-the-top doggy paddle across the pool. Half the class was in hysterics by the time she reached the end. Bob wasn't. His face had reddened. Do you think this that's funny? Get out! Now! She sh he shouted. Manny pulled herself out and grinned as she bowed to the class. That was completely out of order, Bob said, and as he handed her a towel. Now I'm afraid you'll get to sit out this on the side and watch the others. What? Manny stopped grinning. That's not fair. What did I do? Bob turned his back on her. We'll start again. Who's happy to swim confidently and sensibly? About three-fourths of the class raised their hands. I was desperate to get into the pool, but didn't dare put mine up. Not after that. All right, Bob nodded at them. You can get in if you want, but walk down the to the shallow end. He turned to the rest of us. We were lined up, shivering by the side of the pool. You guys w will be with me. Let's go grab some kickboards. After he turned his head away, I snuck in with the group making their way down to the shallow end. I never swum before. I shouldn't have. But I couldn't help myself. I just knew I could do it. And the water looked so beautiful lying there, still and calm, as though it were holding its breath, waiting for someone to jump in and set it alive with splashes and ripples. There were five big steps that led gradually into the water. I stepped onto the first one, and warm water tickled over my toes. Another step in the water wobbled over my knees. Two more, then I pushed myself into the water. Ducked my head under, reaching wide with my arms, and I held my breath, swam deeper. The silence of the water surrounded me and called to me. Silence- oh wait- Drawing my body through its creamy calm, it was as if I'd found a new home. Now that's more like it, Bob shouted when I came up for air. You're a natural. Um, I'm glad you guys have stuck with me to this book. Um, I'll see you guys next time for the next episode. Allow me to go. Peace.